For Lisa P. Jackson, science isn't something that happens in a lab. Science is actually all around us. You know, the air that we breathe, um, the water that we drink, the energy that really mobilizes our planet and our economy. It's the reason I love science is that it really is everywhere. For Jackson, this isn't just theory. It's her life experience. Born in Philadelphia, Lisa was adopted by the Perez family. As a toddler, her family moved to Pontchartrain Park, a suburb of New Orleans. I moved out uh, after college to go to graduate school in Princeton, but my mom and my family were still there, living in the Ninth Ward when Hurricane Katrina hit in 2005. Before Katrina, my mom, who I love dearly, really never understood why I felt so strongly about environmental issues. She came to realize that without protecting those wetlands, they were left somewhat defenseless to natural disasters like hurricanes. But Lisa P. Jackson had realized this decades earlier, during the Love Canal disaster. Chemical companies at the time, living, I mean, working around that area, decided to pay people to take their chemical waste and just put it in this big hole in the ground. And then they covered it up, and no one knew it was there until this chemical waste literally started oozing by pressure into people's basements. I remember thinking, chemical engineers are the ones who engineer the plants that make all the chemicals and plastics that our society was growing on, but also this waste. And I remember thinking to myself, if an engineer designs the processes that make the waste, it needs to be an engineer who designs the processes to clean it up. Jackson was one of the few black women in her class at Tulane University, where she graduated summa cum laude in chemical engineering, then moved north to get her master's from Princeton. After two years, Jackson went to work for the Superfund program of the Environmental Protection Agency. Superfund is a federal government program. It was put in place to address abandoned hazardous waste sites. If you pollute it, you should pay to clean it up or to avoid the pollution. Many of the sites Jackson worked on were in New Jersey, and after 16 years with the EPA, she joined the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection in 2002. Four years later, she was running the agency, and in 2008, Governor John Corzine appointed her to be his chief of staff, but she only lasted a few days on the job. Before I even got a chance to start, I got a call from the president's top advisors asking me to be um, his designee for Environmental Protection Agency Administrator. In 2009, she became the fourth woman and the first African American to run the agency that sets environmental policy for the nation. She has 17,000 people reporting to her. As head of an agency with that much science in our work, we'll have to take what our scientists are saying and make policy. What's the right level of protection from soot pollution? What should we be doing? What's reasonable and what's affordable in terms of climate change? So science is great and science policy is great, but if it's science that's being politicized, I think it's really dangerous for our country. At stake is life on planet Earth and Lisa P. Jackson is making a difference. She already has a plan in place to modernize our country's 30-year-old chemical management laws, charting new ways to protect our drinking water and our air. In 2007, the Supreme Court declared that the EPA must decide what to do about greenhouse gases. Jackson took action. The Clean Air Act, which is one of our bedrock environmental laws, required our agency to determine whether greenhouse gases endanger public health and welfare. And within about a year of taking office, the Obama administration and this environmental protection agency that I lead made that finding. We now regulate greenhouse gas emissions from automobiles, from light duty vehicles, those are the small trucks, from heavy duty vehicles, the big trucks that are on our roadways. And we just recently proposed a rule to limit the emissions of greenhouse gases from new power plants, the first time ever in our country. She's also showing that science conscious policy can be good for the economy. If you hear the president speak, he talks all the time about the jobs that are available and opportunities that are available for us in clean energy and environmental protection. As an engineer, I love that because I always say, you know, the history of environmental protection in our country is actually a history of technological innovation. Lisa P. Jackson is having an impact in Washington and in the world, and people are paying attention. What we are saying is that on a large scale, our use of fossil fuels in this country emit 
lots and lots of carbon dioxide and some other gases that are changing our climate. And the president has called for a market-based transition over to a lower carbon future. It's an incredible privilege to sit at the head of this agency to know that decisions that I make can impact the health and future of our country. And I know already that this will probably be the best job I ever have.